Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If this is your first time here, consider clicking subscribe and hitting that little bell notification icon so you will be notified when I release new content. So we talked about VLANs before and what VLANs were. And now I'm just going to go on like a little bit of a exploration of how uh, VLANs go from switch to switch and things you might encounter and things like that. This may or may not make sense. So let's just, uh, let's see how it goes. So everybody didn't really like the little white board that I was working with. I am going to get a different one. So for now, we're just going to be using the, uh, Wacom tablet here, but I'm going to call this uh, VLAN alignment. I don't know if that fits. Couldn't really come up with a good name for this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, we talked about VLANs and what they are. So in the last video, you can go back and watch that. So here we're gonna have a ubiquity switch. And uh, over here, we're gonna have a Cisco switch. And actually, let's uh, take this one step further. And this is a uh, Unify. And then this will be the big Cisco. And over on this switch, so this is switch number one, number two, this will be switch number one. All right, so over here you've got VLAN one, which is untagged and the default VLAN. And over here, you're gonna have the exact same thing. So with no VLANs configured, you still have VLAN one. It's, it is the uh, untagged default VLAN. And as you start creating VLANs, unless you specify a default VLAN, that is still going to be the case. So now over here, what we're going to do, this is a unify switch. We're going to specify VLANs 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, we are going to do the exact same thing. Now, you want these two switches to talk. First of all, they both have to be doing VLANs 802.1Q. Now, when you configure the Cisco side, you're going to have to, well, you didn't, you may not have to now, but you used to have to because Cisco used to have a thing called ISL. Uh, which was a proprietary, but you used to have to tell it that the encapsulation um, on a trunk port was, you know, 802.1Q. Now, this is where, okay, so let, let's, first let's talk about this trunk. All right, so we got a trunk between these two switches. And you want uh, all of the VLANs to flow, you know, through, through the trunk, both directions, you, uh, both directions. You want it to be, uh, bi, bi-directional, right? So this is where it gets different in the world of networking. Now the concepts are all the same, but how the manufacturers handle it, that's the difference. So on your Unify switch, by default, every single port by default is gonna tag every single one of these VLANs. The Cisco on the trunk we're going to tell it uh, in caps, and in some cases, Cisco may tag all of them, or you may have to specify allowed VLANs on the trunk. Now, with an edge switch, you get VLAN 1 as untagged, and then two through eight by default would be exempted, which is E on the switch. And then you have to either uh, toggle it to tagged, untagged, or other. So it's all about 
making sure that you understand how the vendors are implementing this to make the confusion even deeper for you. Um, some manufacturers will do, let's erase some of this. All right, so we'll say this is Ubiquity here. Um, Cisco, Dell, uh, Netgear. Okay, so what I've seen is in Ubiquity under Unify, um, all ports are basically trunks from the get-go. On the edge switch, you, um, they're basically access ports. And then you have to enable, you know, the VLANs and the tagging. That's also, this is also the same a lot of the times for Cisco now. Dell, so I, I think part of the confusion going forward as you're looking at VLANs is going to be the nomenclatures. Is going to be how what people call their their ports, right? So on a Dell, you'll have a general port, you'll have an access port, uh, maybe a trunk port. You know, Netgear is going to be um, the one that I just did. I didn't see an actual trunk. We went in and we tagged the. The VLAN. So, one thing that you have to pay attention to, and if you're going to do this, you have to your your attention to detail um, when you're getting into networking and security and stuff like that. It has to be you have to have a very high attention to detail. So, read your manufacturer's you know information about the switches. You've got to know how to allow those VLANs and how to set those VLANs up. Now. Here's where it gets not really more confusing, but let's add another uh, layer on top of it. So like with Unify, when you create a VLAN under networks and you have a USG, what is happening is Unify is actually doing two things. It's creating a layer three interface on the USG, and it's creating a layer two VLAN, and it's marrying these up. It's tying these together. So you see them as kind of one and the same. And this is also known as router on a stick. I have a router on a stick video if you search for it. You can see more about that. But that's what this does. So so Unify uh, really blurs the lines. Now you can with Unify do an L2 or a VLAN only and give a VLAN number. And then you need to know how to, to pass that off. So, uh, <laughs> and, and I know we're just, like I said, I'm just kind of like going on like this rant. But um, it used to be when you had layer two switches only, and you can still get layer two switches only, um, you had to have a router, right? So back around the, uh, like the Cisco 2800 series. And then you had like your Cisco, you know, 2950 or 2960, you know, that these were L2 only. You know, then you would uh, put a trunk port between these two and you would have your L3 interface up here and you'd have your L2 uh, VLAN down here and these they would get married uh, over the trunk and you would be able to route, route that traffic. Now, where things are getting um, even blurrier is now we have, and we've had them for a while, but now we've got L3 switches, layer three switches. You know, where we can create that L3 interface 
and the VLAN, marry them up right on the switch, and then move packets at wire speed. So you can switch faster than you can route. Switching is faster than routing. There is a saying in this uh, in this field, and that is switch when you can route when you must. All right, so what I really hope this video did is it explained a little bit about making sure that uh, all of your equipment is talking the same, uh, the same um, protocols, but I hope that it actually triggered some questions that you want to put down in the comments, and then I will follow back up. I think I'm, by the time you see this, I think I'm going to call this uh, VLAN alignment errata or something like that because it's kind of just a, a free flow. But if you've got questions about, about VLANs and configurations, and I hope this kind of uh, scratch the surface and open that up, make sure you post those down there below. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form and someone will contact you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. If you want to talk to us on Discord, the link is down below. If you would uh, like to become a patron, and thank you to those folks, and support the channel via Patreon, that link is down below. And if you'd like to buy any of the gear you see here or use any of our other affiliate links, those links are down below. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks to the channel to keep things rolling in. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.